We are now seeing Molana J.D. Shums distributing prizes to young children. This scene was taken in Masjid Nur, the mosque in which our second Khalifa was elected in 1914. Molana Shams was Imam of the London Mosque for 10 years and during that period he never returned to his homeland. A great sacrifice on his part. Now he has several sons who are missionaries in different parts of the world. By the grace of Allah the Almighty, my father, Maulana Jalaluddin Saib Shams radiallahu anhu, was a companion of the Promised Messiah والسلام, as you have, you have just mentioned. His father, I mean my grandfather, Hazrat Miha Imamuddin Sahib Sekhwani radiallahu anhu and his two brothers, Miha Jamaluddin Sekhwani and Miha Khairuddin Sekhwani radiallahu anhuma were also among the companions of the Promised Messiah والسلام. Not only this, but my great-grandfather Mia Muhammad Siddiq Sahib anhu, was also among the companions of the Promised Messiah والسلام. My grandfather used to go to Qadian from time to time, even before Hazrat Masih Maud had any claim declared. There was one of his relatives, uh, his name was Mia Jan Muhammad Kashmiri. He was the Imam of the Aqsa Mosque and uh, he was appointed as Imam by the father of the Promised Messiah والسلام. So as he was the relative of my grandfather, Mia Imam Uddin Sahib Sikhwani radiallahu anhu, so he used to go to him and thus he was able to see the Promised Messiah والسلام, also while he was coming to the Aqsa Mosque for having the prayers there. In those days, the Promised Messiah والسلام, had started arguing with the opponents of the religion of Islam in various ways. He used to write various articles and uh, those were being published in various newspapers as well. And then he started writing his very famous book, Brahini Ahmadiyya. So that is how my grandfather and his two brothers started knowing about the Promised Messiah more and more. So when in 1889, um, at the commandment of Allah the Almighty, the Promised Messiah started taking bath in Ludhiana. When the Promised Messiah came back to Qadian, my grandfather and his two brothers also took bath and thus they joined the Jamaat. So that is how the Ahmadiyyat came into our family. My grandfather was one of the companions of the Promised Messiah والسلام. My father was born to him and uh, that is how uh, my grandfather used to take him to the Promised Messiah والسلام, from time to time from Sekhwa to Qadian, which is about five to six miles uh, from Sekhwa. And the Promised Messiah والسلام, used to uh, take him in his lap as well. And uh, once the, it is said that the Promised Messiah والسلام, said because my father, uh, Hazrat Mawlana Jalaluddin Shams uh, used to look up in the sky. So the Promised Messiah والسلام, once said that when he will grow up, grow, he will be grown up, inshallah, he will be serving the faith. And thus it was proved when you know, he was grown up that uh, he served the Jamaat a lot in various capacities. So what happened was when he was, he was a child, there was a Madrasa Ahmadiyya was started in Qadian. And he was admitted in, in that first grade. My, my grandmother, or grandfather, used to live in Sekwa. It was a village about five, six miles from, from Qadian. 
Now, my father was admitted, uh, my, uh, my father's cousin, Marana Kamruddin, Kamruddin Saab, he was admitted also, and there were three other students. So, th so there were five students actually all together. And yet they used to travel every day. They would start at four o'clock in the morning to walk four or five, five miles to Kadian. So my father mentions that by the third grade, there were only two people left from that. And that was my father and, and his cousin, Rana Kamaruddin. And he said that, that his cousin was already thinking about quitting also. So <laughs> one day when my father was home, he mentioned to his father that he was thinking maybe he should quit going to school because it was pretty hard. So he said that at that time, his father beat him. And uh, he was crying. And so then he took him. He said that you have to go to Kadian and never think about quitting this. So my grandfather took my father and walked with him halfway to Kadian. And he said that this is your mission and that you're not gonna quit. Uh, Captain Nawab Din Sahib uh, is the relator uh, and he relates that in Meerut, UP, in India, in those days, there used to be a very famous festival held every year, and that was called Nochandi Kamela, the festival of Nochandi. He says that uh, he went to see that uh, festival because in that festival, in those days, people in thousands used to come, get together from various parts of India, and that there used to be you know, nawabs and you know, um, rich people who used to come there uh, hiring the place and you know, putting the marquees and uh, having the you know, fun there you know, with, with the relatives and friends that they used to get together. And uh, so Captain Nawab Din Sab says that uh, he went there to see that uh, festival once uh, with one of his friends and, their, and his children. So when they went there, they reached the festival place, they saw another Ahmadi. And along with that Ahmadi, there was another young man who was of about, um, you know, he was in his teenage, about 16, 17 years of age, maybe. And he was a thin person. So they all, you know, uh, started walking together. And when they finished the shopping, they thought that uh, towards the shops, there, there would be, you know, so many people, you know, gathered there. So avoiding, uh, that side, they, they you know, adopted the other way for going out of the festival. Then they saw that they, there were some people gathered and uh, when they reached that place, they saw that uh, a speaker was a um, Hindu speaker of Arya Smaj. He was speaking against the religion of Islam and of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There were you know, several Muslims also sitting there listening to that speaker. So he, when, when he finished the speech, that young man who was with them, he did not, you know, kept quiet. He did not keep quiet. He said, look, you have been saying a lot of things against Islam and against the Holy Prophet Sallallahu which were baseless things. So we have the right to, to refute them to give the answers to those allegations. But he was refused because he was told that that, that was a private uh, function uh, and uh, he, he won't be allowed to say any word there. So that young man did not stop there. He said immediately, look, if you are not going to allow us to reply those allegations here, we will go outside and we will reply those, to those allegations there. And he asked uh, those Muslims who were sitting there, let's go outside and we will you know, have the jalsa there. We will have gathering there and you know, uh, we will be giving the answers uh, to, to these allegations which you know, the, that speaker was mentioning. So another you know, young man brought um, a wooden stool from somewhere and uh, that young man you know, just jumped and you know, stood up on that stool and he started, you know, uh, 
delivering the speech. And that took one and a half hour. That, you know, he was uh, just simultaneously, you know, he was speaking and giving the references and quotations after quotations um, in reply to those allegations which were, uh, you know, being, be, being uh, said by that Hindu speaker. So, you know, gradually uh, it says that, uh, that there were so many people got together there and they listened to that speech. And uh, obviously, you know, Muslims were very happy and uh, they were joyous that, you know, the, all the allegations have been, you know, given the answers to. And uh, even those Hindus who were, you know, gathered there, they could not say a, even a word against that, whatever, you know, that uh, young man said. And that young man was my father, Hazrat Maulana Jalaluddin Shams, Radhi Anhu. In 1924, when Hazrat al Musrahul Mawud Khalifatul Masih Thani, Radhi Allahu Anhu, came to Europe, he also visited Syria and he went to Damascus. There he met various scholars and various people, and one of them was a famous scholar um, whose name was Sheikh Abdul Qadir al Maghrabi. When Hazrat Khalifatul Masih Sani Razilahu Anhu discussed with him uh, about the Jamaat e Ahmadiyya and uh, about his scheme to send missionaries to different countries, that scholar said to Hazrat Khalifa Sani Razilahu Anhu, Look, you may go anywhere else, but we are Arabs. And if you think that you are going to teach us the Holy Quran or the tafsir of the Holy Quran, forget about it. Don't send your missionaries here. Don't waste your money. Don't waste your energy and efforts. So Hazrat Khalifa Masih Sani Anhu says that he decided at that time that he was going to reply to him by sending the missionary to Arab countries when he would be reaching back to Qadian. So when Hazrat Khalifa Sani Anhu went back to Qadian, the first thing he did was that he sent um, my father, Hazrat Maulana Jalaluddin Sahib Shams Anhu, and Sayyid Zainul Abidin Shah Sahib Anhu, to Syria. So they came in July 1925 and uh, they started preaching while they were traveling in the ship. So that is how their you know, work of the Bleeg started towards Syria or Arab countries. When they reached Damascus, Sheikh um, uh, Sayyid Zainul Abidin Shah Sahib had various friends there because he used to teach there before he went back to Qadian. And uh, thus, Sheikh, uh, Zainul Abidin Shah Sahib introduced my father also to those people. And uh, then Zainul Abidin Shah Sahib came back uh, to Qadian and my father was left there as missionary. Then, obviously, uh, the, you know, the enmity started. There was so much uh, enmity uh, by non-Ahmadis that uh, my father started receiving the threats that uh, he would be killed. Whenever he read the story in the Problem of Sayyid Islam's book about Sahib Zad Abdul Latif Shaheed, that how he was martyred in Afghanistan, that he always felt that uh, Problem of Sayyid Islam has written there that, you know, I don't know if people will be able to give and how they will give sacrifices of this kind after, he's, uh, after he leaves this world. So my father said that he always had wished that somehow he could provide this kind of sacrifice that Sahib Zad Abdul Latif had, uh, had provided. So in uh, Syria, when he was uh, attacked, and they left him for dead, and uh, you know, and miraculously, actually through the prayers of the uh, Hazrat Muslim Maud, uh, that were, what they were said, that against all the readings of the doctors and their reports, he was given a life again, because uh, there was all indications were given that, uh, that he was not gonna survive. So he felt, that his prayers or his wish was fulfilled through this ex experience that he had. When this uh, incident happened, obviously the surgeon said at that time that uh, if uh, he would be cured, that would be a miracle. 
my father said at that time to Munirul Husni Sahib that look, you should uh, send a telegram to Hazrat Khalifatul Masih the second Razi Allahu Anhu informing him about my, you know, th this incident and my situation in which I am at the moment and I'm in the hospital and request him for prayers. So when Hazrat Khalifatul Masih Sani Razi Allahu Anhu received the telegram Hazrat al Muslim Maud Anhu made the announcement in Qadian that people should get together in Masjid Aqsa and he will be leading the silent prayer. Then, when people gathered there and Hazrat al Muslim Maud Anhu also came to the Masjid, uh, Hazrat Muslim Maud Anhu delivered a short speech there and he mentioned about this incident that we should pray together, uh, especially for Sham Sahib, uh, because um, as the enemy had already attacked, and uh, now when they, they would be knowing that you know, he survived, they, they might be trying again to kill him. So that is what we have to pray to Allah the Almighty, that he may save him from all these bad evil desires. So Alhamdulillah, that uh, he was cured, and uh, you know, because of that miracle, that there were many who accepted uh, Ahmadiyyat and they joined the Jamaat. And there was a, uh, a particular comment that was made regarding Sham Saib. Uh, if I'm correct, it was, Wallahi la ibn Abbas in Fina. While he was uh, in Syria, and uh, after the attack, uh, the government of Syria said to him that uh, he should leave Syria immediately because uh, they, they were unable to give him any sa you know, safety. So after seeking the advice and guidance from Hazrat al-Musrul Maud anhu, my father left Syria after a few days and uh, he went to Haifa. And he started you know, the Jamaat there in Haifa. And in Kababir, alhamdulillah, that uh, a great Jamaat was created. And in Haifa and um, in Cairo, you know, he used to go to Egypt as well uh, from Palestine from time to time for preaching purposes. He had various mubasat again and munazras, the debates. <clears throat> and also, he used to have um, the debates with the non Ahmadi Muslims as well as with the, the Christian priests. And Christian priests had to admit after having you know, debates with him, that he was a great scholar of Bible. Because you know, he used to quote Bible very frequently. And by heart, he, you know, he knew the quotations after quotations, and you know, he used to give the references. Um, once, a priest said that uh, he was a very dangerous person you know, for Christianity. And he said that, I wish that uh, you might have been a Christian. So, so, you know, so that you, you are you know, fighting in favor of Christianity against Islam. He, he got the news that his brother had passed away in Qadian. And uh, he had been away from, from, from Qadian for, for a long time. And he was very dev devastated at that time, listening to the news when he heard that. So, so local Ahmadis uh, suggested him to take rest, but that was the time when there was supposed to be a debate with some of the ulama, Arab ulamas. So Ahmadis were, were asking him to take, take it easy and not to do that and postpone that. But he said, he said no, he could not do that. He, he did not want to give the chance to opponents that they would say, okay, Ahmadis backed off. So, Though he was feeling very bad, he, he wanted to confront that and he, he, he had that debate. My mother, Saida Bano, uh, when she was uh, married to my father, they got two, two children. When my, fa my brother was about two and a half years old and uh, my sister was you know, only a few months old, my father was sent to London as missionary. My mother 
and father stayed separately, I mean alone, for about ten and a half years after that period. Ji Bilkul Ungi Marumito on a Bhati or Muje Itna Oge was dar ke abajan hame chord games mari a mi bina chord. A me bathroom me jatiti to me bahir kari ratiti. मुझे यही डर होता था कि अब्बा जान की तरह मम्मी भी हमें छोड़ के न चली जाए काफी अरसा मतलब काफी मैं बड़ी हो गई फिर भी मुझे यह वहम होता था कि मम्मी ना हमें छोड़ के चली जाए स्कूल भी मैं जाना बड़ी मुश्किल से शुरू किया था कि मैं मम्मी को छोड़ के नहीं जा सकती तो अब्बा जान की कमी तो हमें बहुत महसूस होती थी याद करते रहते थे मम्मी से पूछते थे कि हमारे अब्बा हैं भी कि नहीं फिर अम्मी तसल्ली देती थी कि तुम्हारे अब्बा के जो खात आते हैं वो कौन लिखता है फिर कभी-कभी कोई बुक्स वगैरह इस तरह की चीजें भी भेजते थे फिर उन्होंने एक रिकॉर्ड इतना सा था सिल्वर का दो रिकॉर्ड भेजे थे तो उसमें खात की सूरत में आए हुए थे तो हम बीरी का जो कांटा होता है ना उसे लगा के ग्रामोफोन में तो हम सुना करते थे 